Welcome back, everyone. Looks like the players are now ready here as we're going to be jumping into Gonzi going up against Hart on MLG Shakura's Plateau. I'm JP McDaniel. And I'm Rob Simpson. And this is going to be a crazy TVT to say the least. Game number one on Shakur's Plateau. This could mean that we're going to see some really, really long games. Yesterday, we actually thought that we were going to see some crazy TVTs as well, some super long ult Right. Thought that we might even see some fusion cores, but yeah. that actually didn't happen. Some of these games have been happening just so quickly. They try to get the advantage early on and just finish off the game. Yeah, I, I feel like, you know, when we saw those longer TVTs, people simply just didn't know the game well enough because sure. they, they play safe. They, they don't want to do anything risky. And we saw yesterday, uh, for example, we thought the Rain series uh, against yeah. Alive. Uh, Alive was yeah. going to be extremely long. Uh, but they just played with so many aggressive strategies that I feel like just people are starting to understand the game better as we get more and more uh, used to just simply playing. So who do we have over here, Rob? Over here on the left side of the map, currently a free agent. He's actually looking for a foreign team right now that he would love to join. This is Ganji. Playing under Slayer Stella. <laughs> Which doesn't make much sense, but we're going to let go it go. Go figure. And his opponent on the other side of the map, making a, a very nice appearance at this event, playing for team complexity, Hart. Now, Hart is the type of player that uh, complexity's got to be so, so excited to have him here in this tournament. It's his first MLG, as far as I know. He's just playing extremely, extremely well. Uh, he's basically already top eight, correct? Yeah, he's, I believe it's top six I, now. I believe it's either, or it's top eight, you're right. I, I want to say he is the one person out of the top eight here at the uh, Winter Championships that is not from the MLG Winter Arena. Oh. Everyone else was in that top eight at the MLG Winter Arena, which really shows you, I mean, these guys are good on a consistent basis. Right, they have been tried and true in, yep. their, in their trials. <laughs> right, right. Well, we see Gas first mm -hmm. come out for Sella, so uh, he might be going for a very quick factory or uh, opening up Reapers. We will probably see here in just a couple seconds, what he's really up to. He could go for Banshees as well. Hart, yeah. uh, on the other hand, did opt for that Rax first uh, yeah. with the refinery. It's all really going to depend when Ganji adds on that second refinery, right? Because that's how we're going <laughs> to find out what he's going to end up doing. Yesterday, we saw the, uh, the Cloakless Banshee make an appearance a few times in the game. Yeah. So. Let's see what Sella is up to. Oh, man. We apologize if you guys can just hear fans going absolutely crazy behind us because Mortal Kombat, yeah. guys, it's here at MLG, and they are very, very, very energetic and loud. And uh, I actually... Mortal Kombat's getting so hype. I, I love watching uh, love watching that... Uh, any of the fighting games that we have, Rob. Don't, don't touch the keyboard, Rob. You messed everything <laughs> up. <laughs> we'll just blame it on Sunny, man. So yeah. we have the SCV getting in here and getting a bit of information. He does see the factory going down. He also sees that tech lab being added on. So that can be a small tell as to what he's going to be doing. Oh, and now we also have a factory over here being laid down for Hart. And his second refinery is just about wrapped up. Now, with this factory where it is over here on the left, I really think he's going to be going for uh, a fast start port and uh, on to Banshee play, especially after seeing that second refinery. Uh, he's also thrown down a bunker here, possibly just to uh, kind of run, give his opponent uh, an idea that actually isn't there uh, with the tech lab going down the starport as well. Most likely cloaked Banshees there. If he was going cloakless, he would only be on one refinery at this time. Yeah, they are currently fighting. So they're, they're fighting to get into the top four. This is top six. Elimination is on the line. Wow. And that's where you start seeing the money jumps. Yeah, man. Uh, Hart's got to be... I wonder, I mean, this is his first big event, so he's got to be incredibly nervous. Uh, thank God that he's really not on the main stage, though, because that is where the jitters uh, come to fruition. So over here, we see the bunker, uh, I think, deflected a scout. Can't really check the kill counts uh, of the Marines, though, inside. So, And now over here, we have Ganji expanding out into his natural, which is going to be a good move. Now he is going for that cloakless Banshee. So this is going to be a, it's, it's all going to come down to micro. You can gain such a large advantage if you're able to really get a lot done with it. But if it's mis microed, you're going to just not really be able to accomplish too much with it. Now, we see that Hart doesn't have a very high marine count at all currently. 
And Hart also didn't know, has no idea that that Banshee is on the way. Yeah, he has some inclination, though. That's why he went for this Viking first oh. out of the starport. <laughs> Uh, but right after that, though, he immediately starts Cloak yeah. and uh, also gets the Banshee out yeah, as well. So he's for looking himself. forward. His Marines are very active here in the main base. And he knows because if you go into his base, well, he did not see uh, the refineries, but he only had one at that time. So if he had scouted that, he knows it's going to be Cloakless. Uh, is he actually saving energy? Yes, he is. That's yeah. why his uh, orbital command is saved up to 70 right now. Now, will Ganji be able to get information here? We see the Banshee moving around the right side of the main of Heart, and he has so far secured at least one kill. We have the Marines closing the gap and going to be able to scare off that Banshee. But oh no, now he sees the horror that is the Viking. Will the Banshee be able to get away? He's doing a great job. Micro get only 38 HP remaining. He knows that it's going to be going down, so he goes in to trade for another kill. So that Banshee was only able to get three kills there and now this other banshee coming straight out of heart has been seen by ganji but cloak is about to finish does ganji have enough energy saved up to scan this and cloak just finishing there in the nick of time but now he's got to be careful as the oh. scan could come down let's go real quick check out his orbital there in this main does not have enough energy has to wait for five more seconds i believe that's what he's waiting for as uh, over here at the main oh no he runs straight into a turn oh, wow. and the viking Ooh. can see him but only till 28 HP. So it's pretty close now. The Viking's going to be chasing it down. He can scan it to kill this. Is he, is, is he going to choose to scan it instead of dropping the next mule? No, he actually just runs right by with the Viking. And the Banshee escapes. So you saw that there. The medevac happened to get into the SCV just in time to have to need three kills. Oh, the Marine almost got it. But the Banshee was able to finish him off before long. So that Banshee chose to attack an SCV, and because the medevac was there, it needed an extra volley, which meant that the Banshee could not secure another kill. Absolutely. Really, yeah. really close situations on both sides. Yeah, and you can actually see right now in this game that Hart has taken the map control here out of the two Zell Naga Towers. Main stage is going crazy right now, Rob. I, I wish we could watch both streams at once, man. Oh, man, Huck the parting must be absolutely bonkers. All right, so Hart setting up control here in the center of the map. Siege mode just now started. Let's go check out their tech path over here and really what they're doing with all their unit producing structures. And we have a couple more barracks being added on by Hart. He's also currently working on his siege mode and getting out a tank as well as he continues uh, to switch into medevac production over here back in Ganji's base. He's got a reactor on his barracks and he's also well established down at his natural. So this economic advantage we can see the story has really been told in the supply as well. He currently has a 13 supply lead, and now Ganji is moving around with a drop. Yeah, and uh, Hart actually got extremely, extremely lucky with that scan because he did, in fact, see that medevac en route down south, and he is moving straight towards the base of Ganji. And Ooh. here's that Raven. If he can get in range of those Vikings, he'll be able to do some damage. Oh. But these three siege tanks are going to de deny Hart from moving any closer. That Raven getting very, very close to being killed off. That's right. That Viking count is just too damn high for Hart to deal with. And now we have this rogue medevac working its way around the bottom of the ramp. Is Hart going to have units to stop this? Wow, we actually see an air unit. There it is. Okay, a Viking. It senses where it's going to be, but it doesn't see the medevac. So the medevac should be able to unload and unleash some damage. Yeah, and we have a little force right here as uh, these SCVs are being oh. focused down here from Ganji. Remember, there is not no stem, so what is he going to be focusing down here? Kind of all over the place with that uh, focus, and he's not going to do almost any damage with that drop. Yeah, Hart was just far too prepared for that. He also has great positioning with his Vikings, ready to finish off everything easily. Just an overall great response from Hart. And now... Ganji continuing to stick with that pretty heavy infantry play. He's He still hasn't gone for Stim just yet. He's opting for combat shields first. And this is looking to me like the positional TVT series that we all know and love. But at the same time right now, Hart does in fact see this because we hold this watchtower. Yeah. With a and one so HP Marine. There so. it goes. Now Ganzi just needs to reposition it. He just needs to take that watchtower and then Hart really can't maintain hold of this map. And there we go. So this is a little interesting. Uh, right now, Ganji does have the air control. 
But as soon as he gets more Vikings over here, Hart will have the superior air force because of those two Banshees. They really, really help so, so much against those siege tanks. And oh, Whoa. Hart might catch his opponent on siege here as he goes and takes the Zelnaga tower, sees his opponent falling back for one second, but Kanji's not done as he's moving forward here. Both players are on siege and oh no, that's gonna be terrible for Kanji as he loses oh. so many Marines. And the Ganji actually moves forward. Man, so Ganji doing a great job capitalizing when he can. Now we see Hart is starting to go up into siege mode, but those unsieged tanks are going to demolish those siege tanks so quickly. Just their DPS when they're unsieged against armored units is just so high, especially when you have enough siege tanks to practically one shot them. So this puts Ganji in a nice position. He has practically wiped out all of Hart's forces. Yeah, and the big thing there is that he lost so many tanks in that last engagement. They take so long to rebuild here. You even see a ton of SCVs being pulled. Hart is a little bit fearful of what's to come, and, and Ganji is just actually kind of falling back. You see a scan even go down. I believe that was from Hart. Yeah, mm -hmm. he wants to know exactly what is going on. Saw his opponent's uh, Marines for maybe a split second there, but did not see the entire army. Once again, another scan. Oh, that is a scan actually from oh. Sela. He's trying to figure out what exactly his opponent's up to, sees this, and he's like, oh, I should have been in there a little bit earlier. Now he's got a much bigger force. But I think that Ganzi still has enough to break through this. He has just so many Vikings. He can snap the air advantage right away from Hart. And now he's moving around the bottom of the map just to get in damage wherever he can. Folks firing down one of those refiners. And now the Marines are starting to get in. They got a little bit too close. They're all decimated. And Hart taps out, allowing Ganzi to take game one. Yeah, the reason he tapped out there is once you're on uh, two gas compared to your opponent's four, and both of you are going for a very siege tank heavy army, you just need that gas to create anything out of the factories and the starports. You cannot get by purely based on bio play in a matchup like that. So game one, going to Ganzi. I got to say, Hart looked very strong in that matchup, and he's going to have to play a little bit better, maybe a little bit sneakier in game two. Right, because clearly when he played straight up, man, Ganzi just knew what was up every single step of the way. So when we come back, we are going to have game two between Hart and Ganzi. I'm Rob Simpson. I'm JP McDaniel. Don't go anywhere. More action right here, MLG Winter Championships.